guys all have your quilts. Graduates, you guys all have your quilts from the quilting room. Okay. Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys today. So congratulations to our graduates who are here today. We got a couple more people coming in. So um, I'm pretty confident all the graduates, you grabbed your quilts from the quilting room. Good. Uh, well, during that blessing, we'll have your, you and your, fa your parents or your family stand and drape the quilts over their shoulders as we do the blessing. So that'll be at that. So. Uh, announcements. That was the main announcement. The other announcement, we have the baptism of Jordan uh, Haberling next week, so join us for that. Um, I don't think there's any other announcements. So uh, we'll, We will be keeping you up to date with Sunday school plans and confirmation plans um, in the coming weeks, so we haven't s finalized those things, but uh, we'll keep you up to date with that. So. With that, we will continue with our worship. Oh, uh, during our worship, we'll be having or trying to do quiet service actions to help uh, reduce the risk of speaking and spreading that way. 
Uh, so if you want, you may speak the words quietly to yourself or in a, slow, in a small whisper. Um, but the other way to do this is to respond using quiet service actions. So when we say amen, um, I would invite you to simply just nod your head. So we will practice it like this. So Lord, keep us safe this day. Amen. You can just bow like that. You can bow your head. You can just do a hand bow if you wish. Uh, when we have a for also with you, um, I invite you to spread your hands in welcome. So like this. So the Lord be with you and also with you. So then, then there'll be a couple other times that will be marked as we go. So um, all of our graduates are here except for Sydney Boom, who couldn't make it down from Beersford today. So, but we'll have we have her quilt here, and we'll bless it. Um, the blessing will be on these pictures on this screen of just the screen. Sarah's going to take separate video of the congregation during the blessing time, and that will be put up on Facebook or on uh, YouTube later in the day. So, if you want to share that with friends and family. Uh, that'll be up this afternoon. So, uh, You'll need a piece of paper and crayons or markers for coloring for our kids' time at 10 o'clock today. Uh, we continue our service with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd ask that if you want, you can take a moment to make the sign of the cross on your foreheads as a sign of this forgiveness. Our gathering song is Dearest Jesus at Your Word. Uh, as we cannot sing, I invite you to listen to the music and reflect on the images and the introduction to our day on the screens.
grace of our Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Kings. On Mount Horeb, where God had appeared to Moses with typical signs of God's presence, earthquake, wind, and fire, Elijah now experienced God in sheer silence. God assured Elijah that he is not the only faithful believer. 7,000 Israelites are still loyal. God instructs Elijah to appoint two men as kings and to anoint Elisha as his own successor. A reading from 1 Kings. At Horeb, at the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him and saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand before the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Matthew's gospel typically portrays Jesus' disciples as people of little faith who fail despite their best intentions. In this story, Matthew shows how Jesus comes to the disciples when they are in trouble and sustains them in their time of fear and doubt. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart! It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, in a, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There's a saying that's been going around during this time of, we are in the same storm, but not the same boat. It comes from a poem 
written around May by a British author, Damien Barr. And I'd like to read the poem now. I heard that we are in the same boat, but it's not that. We are in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Your ship can be shipwrecked and mine might not be, or vice versa. For some, quarantine is optimal, a moment of reflection or reconnection, easy in flip-flops with a whiskey or tea. For others, this is a desperate crisis. For others, it is facing loneliness. For some, peace, rest time, vacation. Yet for others, torture. How am I going to pay my bills? Some were concerned about a brand of chocolate for Easter. This year, there were no rich chocolates. Others were concerned about the bread for the weekend, or if the noodles would last for a few more days. Some were in their home office. Others are looking through trash to survive. Some want to go back to work because they are running out of money. Others want to kill those who break the quarantine. Some need to break the quarantine to stand in line at the banks. Others to escape. Others criticize the government for the lines. Some have experienced the near death of the virus. Some have already lost someone from it. And some believe they're infallible and will be blown away if or when this hits someone they know. Some have faith in God and expect miracles during 2020. Others say the worst is yet to come. So friends, we are not in the same boat. We are going through a time when our perceptions and needs are completely different. And each one will emerge in his own way from that storm. It is very important to see beyond what is seen at first glance. Not just looking, more than looking, seeing. See beyond the political party, beyond biases, beyond the nose on your face. Do not judge the good life of the other. Do not condemn the bad life of the other. Don't be a judge. Let us not judge the one who lacks as well as the one who exceeds him. We are on different ships looking to survive. Let everyone navigate their route with respect, empathy, and responsibility. As I read this poem, I saw a parallel between this poem and our text for today. Jesus has sent the disciples back across the Sea of Galilee. Uh, they were on the other side with a crowd where Jesus was seeking to find alone time because just before this text was the feeding of the 5,000, and just before that was when Jesus find out, finds out his uh, cousin, John the Baptist, was killed. And Jesus is finally able here to find the solitude he's been seeking for a time to mourn the death of his cousin. And as the disciples are on the sea, the storm picks up and it pushes their boat out into the middle of the sea. And night comes and the storm grows. And in the morning, Jesus comes walking on the water to them. And they are terrified fearing that this is a ghost. Well, because they've never seen anyone walk on water before. And as Jesus gets close to the boat, he calls out, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. But the wind is still blowing. And Peter calls out to Jesus, Jesus, if it is you, can you prove it? Command me to come out on the water with you. And Jesus says, Come. And Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking towards Jesus. But as he takes his steps, he notices that the wind is still around him, the storm is still around him, and he begins to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and catches Peter and lifts him back. 
and says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? I noticed something this time when I was reading through the text that I've always connected Jesus saying, why did you doubt? To Peter's failure to be able to walk on water. That somehow if he hadn't doubted, he would have been fine and he would have continued to walk on the water. But now I'm starting to wonder if what he's talking about is goes back to Peter's question. I wonder if he's asking Peter, why did you doubt that it was me? I told you that it was me. It is I. Do not be afraid. Why did you have to put this temptation on me to have, it, to have you walk on water when I knew you couldn't? Would I lie to you if it was not me? I also, in this text, though, don't feel that Jesus is mad at Peter or disappointed truly in Peter. I think he's more worried for Peter. He's saying here, Peter, you can trust me. He sees that Peter is in the midst of this storm and that Peter is scared. Because I think part of Peter's issue right now is that this is more to him than just a physical storm that they're going through. He's a fisherman. He's been through storms. But one of the last times they went through this huge storm on the Sea of Galilee, the boat was on the point of capsizing, and Jesus, though, was in the boat. Jesus was in the boat, in the stern of the boat, asleep there, and they went and woke him up, and he immediately calmed the waters. This time, though, Peter looks around, and he sees the storm, and Jesus isn't there. He doesn't quite know what to do with the fact that Jesus isn't there. So when he does see Jesus, he can't help himself. He can't just wait for Jesus to get to the boat. He has to try to get to Jesus first. And that leads to him sinking. We are all in the same storm but we are in different boats. And to each of us, in our own boats, Jesus comes walking on the waters. Jesus comes to our boats, reaching to us where we are to show us that we are not alone and that in him we can find safety. That's the promise of this story, that Jesus will cross storms and seas that surround us to be with us in our boats, giving us peace and safety. We don't have to get out of the boat. We trust that Jesus comes and is in our boat, that the storms may buffet, but we will not be overcome, that God is stronger than any storm that can blow. That's our promise right now. But that leads then to our callings. Because as the poem said, some of us have boats that are fine right now, while others have boats that are sinking. So what do we do? There's a bad joke that I heard this week, and I'm going to inflict it upon you. Why did the disciples cross the sea? to get to the other side. It's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. What was on the other side of the sea? It was more people who were in need. That Jesus is sending the disciples back across the sea to where people are in need. Jesus isn't calling us to jump out of boats and try to walk on water. Jesus is calling us to stay in the boat and reach out to those who are sinking. That we're called to sail to those in the deepest need and assist them. We're called to reach out to those whose boats are sinking physically, spiritually, mentally, and to lift them up physically, spiritually, mentally. 
and to gently let them know that Jesus is here and that we are here sent by Jesus. And we know that as we sail, should storms still rage around us, Jesus will always reach us. Because Jesus isn't just in my boat. And Jesus isn't just in your boat or that other person's boat. Jesus is in all of our boats. May we trust and believe that Jesus is here with us. May we reach out to those who are sinking. Amen. Our hymn is When Peace Like a River. Uh, we'll do the blessing of graduates at this time. If I could have the graduates and their families stand, or whoever you want stand to wrap the quilt. Uh, we'll just have you either stay in your pew or move to an aisle so you have a little bit more space. So, And just sort of open it up and drape it over their shoulders.
Dear graduate, at this time in your life, we are eager to show you how delighted we are that you have reached this milestone in your life. As a fellow member of this community of faith, we rejoice with you and want you to know of our pride and excitement as you move from this accomplishment into the next phase of your life. We also want you to know that wherever you go and whatever you do, you are going forward with our prayers for God's continual guidance, power, protection, and strength. Members and friends of Emmanuel, will you promise to keep our graduates and families in your thoughts and prayers as they go forth into the future? If so, say we will by raising your hands. We will. If you're watching online, you can type we will in our chat if you'd like. So, Will you as fellow believers in Jesus Christ promise to help these graduates as need and opportunity arise? We will. You may join hands and place your hands on the shoulders of your graduate. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, when you welcomed the children, your invitation included each one of us. Your guiding hand has continually been upon these young men and women. You have sustained them. You have shared in their laughter and wiped away their tears. In times of confusion, you have offered direction. In times of sorrow, you have offered hope. In times of doubt, your Holy Spirit has lifted them up. Remind them in these quilts that they are surrounded by the love of their families and this congregation. Grant, O oh Savior, to each of these graduates the knowledge of your continued presence as they go forth into the future. Bless them and keep them. Guide their steps, hold them in the hollow of, their, of your hand, and bless them and keep them now and forever. I had bless and keeping. You guys have double blessing and keeping, just like you had blessed double graduation. So you may be seated as we continue with our prayers. Let's give them a round of applause for our graduates. <laughs> Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need for your whole church throughout the world. Give courage in the storms so that we may see and hear Jesus calling, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we call upon you to bring peace to our world, to end hatred and anger that lead to violence. Be with and keep safe all in harm's way. We pray especially for all those serving in our military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of blessing, we lift up the blessings of this community 
Today we lift up Tammy, Gavin, Taylor, Chase, Laura, and Joyce, who have birthdays this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, we lift up our graduates, Sydney, Adam, Emily, Lily, Casey, Chris, Will, Kyra, and Bryce. Hold them close as they move to the next stage of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you bring, us, you bring comfort to us in our need. Be with all who fear and are anxious about coronavirus. Be with all hospital staff as they work to fight it. Be with those in our community working to continue to feed and care for us at restaurants, grocery stores, and general stores, clinics, and first responders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we call out to you with the prayers of our hearts. Be with the family of Lynn and Lisa, Dale, Matt, Jaylee, Patsy, Caitlin, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Margaret, and Steve. And those on our long-term list, Ramona, Laney, Verl, Chad, Owen, George, Martin, Carol, Virginia, Verlin, Mel, Ashley, Cole, Mary, Dennis, Betty, and Lincoln. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Actually, I'm going to do an announcement first, and then that will sort of close out with the Lord's Prayer. I forgot about this invitation. Uh, Lynn Connie unfortunately passed away Thursday morning. Uh, her funeral service will be Saturday morning, this coming Saturday, and then there will be a visitation Friday night. Uh, there will be more information and email out this week for you. So, Let us hold Rusty and Lynn's whole family in our hearts as we go through the Lord's Prayer. I will speak each line, and then we'll have a moment of silence to consider what it is that we pray for in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. I invite you to share peace with one another. If you're family, you can shake hands. If you want to do peace signs or wave at people, um, if you're in the chat, you can type chat. If you have your phones, you can text peace to one another or text peace to someone who's not here. So we'll have a moment of sharing the peace. We continue with our offering. Our offering plates will be placed in the back of the sanctuary in the entryway. Um, you may either have put them already in there as you came in, or you may put your offering in there as you leave. So. But we pray for all of the things that God has given us that we offer our thanks back to God for. So let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
hear the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our closing song is My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. It's wonderful to see you guys all. So have a great day. Congratulations to all our graduates and blessings and prayers to you as you move and especially blessings and prayers to parents as they start to either, I think most of your, your this is either your first child you're sending off to college or to real life or your last one. So both ends of the spectrum of what do I do now? It's either going to be nice and quiet or too quiet in your homes. So blessings and peace to you as you go. So have a great day.